right. Hello, fellow RVers. Hello. My name is Cyrus. And I am Jen. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about an exhaust brake on your RV for you, if those of you have diesel pushers. Yes. And today I'm going to go through the process of trying to unstick our exhaust brake that isn't working right now. What is that? What does it do? So exhaust brake is very important um, because there's so much weight on your unit, on your diesel pusher. Uh, you need, you don't want to wear out your brakes going downhill. Uh, in general, you don't want to put less wear on your brakes. One, it's expensive to replace, very costly. Two, if you're going down, especially if you're towing, if you're going down a big pass, a big hill, um, you can um, generate more heat than they're capable of um, tackling and end up with a really scary situation where you might need to hit a, an off-ramp mm -hmm. uh, truck uh, runaway ramp. So it's all things you don't want to do. But mostly it, it saves wear and tear on your exhaust or your brake system and it's important thing it's very important to have so in our situation we just bought this uh, uh, Monaco Knight behind us here and the <clears throat> when you when I activate the exhaust brake it is downshifting the transmission is doing everything it's supposed to but it's not slowing the vehicle down in any meaningful way mm -hmm. so uh, we'll go inside here in a minute. I'll show you where you can access that, what it looks like. And what it basically is, is um, past the turbocharger on the exhaust, there's a butterfly valve that closes off the exhaust. And I won't go into the technical details of how that works, but it's important that it functions. It's pneumatically controlled. And I'll show you that when we get in there. And for those of you who have an RV with this, um, even if it's not sticking up, it's a maintenance issue to lubricate this and especially for uh, seasonal or part-time use they tend to seize up when they're not used and so preventatively you'd want to lubricate this probably do it with every oil change um, and especially if you're going to store it for long term before you store it and then after you're um, done storing it, go to use it so that's the intro we'll see you Yay! inside i get to learn stuff so on our unit, we access the engine from inside the bedroom and pull this compartment door off. Some units, um, yours may have a side radiator where you can get to it from the back of the, the coach. Uh, this is the case for us. So if you look down, here's the engine and you can see this is the unit that we're talking about. It's a pack brake exhaust brake. And um, there's a shaft here with a lever and that shaft goes down through this housing and inside this housing there's a butterfly valve that needs to turn. Connected to the um, the arm right here on the shaft is a pneumatic cylinder. So it's run by air pressure off of your engine when it's running and it has this line that comes down here. I don't know if you can see that gen down in there. I'll get the light in there a little bit. It runs down to this device right here which is a solenoid mag valve. So it's got two wires when you turn the engine brake on and the conditions are right and it's time for it to actuate <coughs> it energizes the solenoid which is basically just a valve that allows your air pressure to get routed up through this line into this cylinder which is an actuator so it pushes the rod right here pushes this turns this actuates the engine brake so this is really high heat obviously it's exhaust so there's a lot of heat here and so what you want to do is get the proper oil which we're going to get I don't have at the moment but the proper oil to lubricate this which is going to be you can find it if you look up pack brake p-a-c-b-r-a-k-e pack brake um, exhaust brake lubricant and it's a high temp um, high temperature uh, synthetic oil that you want to use for this. For right now, because I don't have it and mine is seized up because that's the way we got it. It was not serviced. And I'm going to try and unseize it. So this shaft where it pivots in there is, is seized up probably with some corrosion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it right now with some brake cleaner, get some of this dirt off of here and dust. And then I'm going to hit it with some, some WD-40. These WD-40s are real thin oil and to get in there and hopefully break it free and then I'm going to try and work it free. Um, I'll show you guys later but what you're going to want to do if you're not seized up 
is you're going to, want to take this lubricant and put about five or six drops. You're going to want to get it down in the spring down in here so it works down into that shaft. <coughs> and you're going to want to put some here on this pivot point. You're going to want to put some, it would be helpful to actuate that out a little bit, but clean that up. You're going to want to put some on this shaft so it lubricates in there. And then back here, it's hard to see, but it has another joint like this where this cylinder can articulate back there. You want to lubricate that there. What I'll do after this, the reason why you don't want to use WD-40 as your primary lubricant for this is it's a, um, it is a, what's the word I'm looking for? A petroleum based product and it can't handle the heat. So it's going to burn up and it's, it, it'll work for a minute, but it's not going to be a good long time, long term thing. So I'm going to, and it's going to stink really bad. <laughs> so I'm going to do this to hopefully unseize it and then get the proper oil. But this oil is pretty dang thin and should run down in there and hopefully break it up. So that's what we're doing. Okay, we're back. So I, um, I removed the one clip right here from the top, but it's not enough room for it to, with this plate for it to go through. So there's also one on the back side. So if you're doing this, I recommend a magnet. It's really helpful while you do it so you don't drop it. I used a little screwdriver and gently pulled that clip out from the bottom, able to pull the pin up, and now move this uh, actuator out of the way, pneumatic actuator out of the way, so I can work on freeing this up. And as I suspected, ours is pretty locked up, um, so I'll have to come back for that. I'm going to let it sit for a while, and then I might gently try and try and work it. But right now it's pretty seized, so there you go. Pretty seized. Yep, yeah, you don't want to hit it too hard. I'll bend it. So, who knows? Might end up having to take this thing out. I don't know. Time will tell. But since I might have to take it out, might as well, <laughs> might as well start lubricating these bolts, just in case. And that plug that I was talking about. Probably going to be pretty smoky. I'll definitely want to put the lid back on this and run it whenever I do run it for a while because we live in our RV, our, our coach, and we don't want to be breathing in a bunch of smoky WD-40. <laughs> so, yep, let you know how it goes. So it's not looking to me like this is going to unstick itself with a little bit of WD-40 and I don't want to beat on it and damage it. I would highly recommend not doing that. Um, I could, if I beat on this, I can make the hole uh, ovular or not round and the pin may not fit. Yeah, I could drill it out, but I could also damage or bend this or bend the, bend the shaft. So from experience, I'm not going to do that from experience. I can just tell you right now this thing's not going to unstick. So what we're going to do in this video is remove the pack brake exhaust brake, which is this assembly right here. And I'm going to take it to a bench and um, lubricate the shaft underneath here where the shaft goes through its bearing, its bushing, and go from there. Kind of, we'll, we'll get there. We'll see what, we'll see what happens, see how far I have to go into it. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to re remove these two clamps to allow me to pull this out. And then I will take off uh, this pneumatic airline here, probably down there because it's just going to be easier to get to and pull it out. So here we go. So with these clamps, I highly recommend clean. Uh, these weren't the threads weren't really dirty on mine. But I would highly recommend some lubrication and even a wire brush, something to clean them up. You don't want these nuts, if they get really tight, they will fail uh, or gall up the threads. And then you have to replace this whole clamp. And that's just another cost. So once you get these loose, you're going to take a pry bar. And you're going to want to get in there. If I can get in there. And there she goes. And there she goes. Alright, 
these are loose. I think I'll need a little more. I need to come to the end of the thread. I like to leave the nut on usually just so I don't lose it. Yep, sometimes these clamps, they hang up. Um, I'll show it to you when I pull it off, but they kind of have a couple different sections. And so down there it's holding up, so I'm gonna try and, there it goes, Just pop it loose. Slide that back. So yeah, I see if you can get down there, Jen. They have these different sections of the parts of the clamp, so on the back side it'll, it'll hang up some. So I just gave it a tap on there. Now that's off. We'll pull it out. There we go. Now, I might have lucked out. Sometimes they have, have to have gaskets on here, and I don't see. I think this side is supposed to have a gasket, but it may not. All right, so now I'll pull this guy out. Could you test me my croissant wrench, Jen? Your croissant wrench. Croissant should be in the side. Oh, the sides, it's black. Yeah, there you go. That's the one. Ta da! Yep. No shame in this game. Alright, so I'll we'll take this guy. Carefully remove this. Airline that I was talking about here. This is that back point where you want to lubricate as well, where this cylinder pivots. So there we go. We got her out. Is she stuck open? Is that what that's doing? Yeah, it's supposed to be open. So oh. it's spring-loaded open so that your exhaust can flow through that. Mm -hmm. When you activate it, it's going to close this butterfly valve. And so there she is. So I'm going to take it out of the unit, lubricate it thoroughly. I also could probably get a wrench or something very carefully on this. I might be able to. I don't know if I really want to because it, it might damage it, but... Uh, I'm going to clean it up with some brake clean, get it all cleaned up, and then go from there. Go. All right, shout out to our friend Andy. Um, he's been gracious enough to let us stay here, which is amazing, and use his wonderful garage. So it's nice. It's nice to not always be working in the dirt or inside the RV. I already cleaned it. I'm going to hit it with some WD-40. And I already did this, but I'll do it again. I'm going to hit it with some WD-40. So what I'll do now is I'm going to prop it up. There's a little bit of a valley there. I'm going to prop it up, saturate it, and let it all soak in. So I'll just set this up against here. Yep, and just let it sit for a little bit. It looks like we got a pack break. So we got a part number there. That's nice, a serial number, <clears throat> some information. So I'll go online and order a new gasket. I don't believe that... I'm not sure if this side needs one, but this one definitely does. Um, there's a gray gasket that fits in there that you need or it's going to leak exhaust. Um, and the brake might not work as well as it should. It might also be loud. And more, most importantly, when you have an exhaust leak with a diesel, it's going to make everything black all around it because um, that exhaust has got a lot of carb soot in it. I think with this, I may end up having to wanting to and having to put some heat to it to help um, to help break it up, help the oil seep in there. And also with that thermal expansion, it gives a little more clearance um, so it can get it to break free. In the meantime, uh, well, when I'm done, I'll clean all this up. If I had a shop, if I had a garage, which I don't anymore, I had an air compressor and I had a little, um, you know, blowy downer, um, I could take that and just attach it to here, just put the rubber tip on there, blow some air, and work this. But I'll be able to pull this out. It's spring-loaded, but pull it out a little bit. But my, I'm pretty sure this is just fine and works fine. But if I had that, I would hook up some air to that, clean this off a little bit. I, I'd be a little hesitant with brake clean because there are seals in there. I wouldn't really want to damage the O-rings in there. Um, so I wouldn't recommend cleaning that. Uh, maybe with some surface, like with a rag, wiping it off with some brake clean is fine. But I highly wouldn't recommend spraying any um, any WD-40 either, because WD-40 um, deteriorates O-rings. So I wouldn't recommend that. I would definitely use the synthetic lubricant that Packard um, has. And so you can actuate this with any kind of air. Supposed some air, pull that rod out, clean it up put a little bit of drips of lube on there, 
maybe work it a couple times, verify that it's working. Um, I'm fairly confident that this is not the problem, or this is not a problem, rather. So, there you go. Okay, we're back. Fun fact, thousand dollar part. So, why are you doing that? All right, since you asked, uh, in physics terms, there's what's known as the coefficient of linear thermal expansion. And what that means is when you heat metal, it expands. So if it were a flat piece of metal, it would expand outward. But in this case, we have a round piece of metal. And inside of it is like a dowel, like a steel shank that rotates. And it's seized. So by heating this in a circle, it's going to expand like that. It's exaggerated, but it's going to get bigger. And so it's going to get bigger. And the outside's being heated, so the hope is, and the way this works is, is it will help um, create some space between the shaft and the bearing and allow me to break it free. Once you break it free, we'll work it back and forth, flush it a bunch with oil, and it'll be okay. Um, but we gotta get to that point of breaking it free. So. That's what that's all about. Why, thank you, Cyrus. The more you know. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a crack at it here, see if we added enough heat to this. So I'm gonna give it a little beating time. Doesn't seem like she's wanting to move. Don't think she's moving. More heat. <laughs> then take your hand and hold this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, things don't always go as you want them to, and that's okay. So I think the next thing that I'm gonna approach, the next tact I'm gonna approach is to disassemble this here arm off of here, um, if I can get it off. And then this here butterfly valve, by taking these bolts off, then this valve, this plate will pull right out. And then I'm hoping I still have a good puller. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure out a way, hopefully, to use a puller and pull this shaft out, clean it, hone it out, and then reassemble it. That's the plan. So I had a little brain fart here, not a brain fart, but a thought. I'm taking this off <clears throat> so it will not move in the direction that it's intended to move in. But when you have stuck stuff, a lot of times you want to work it back and forth. So with this plate on here, that's a bracket for your pneumatic cylinder, it has a stop right here that only allows it, well, it's in the closed position. It can't go any further in that direction. So my hope is by taking this plate off and that stop off, I can try working it um, in the opposite direction because it is stuck like Chuck and doesn't want to go in the cl closing position. So, all right, so we got that off. So now I don't think this is going to come off completely because it won't come off because of the arm but that's okay so now I can try and go in the opposite direction and for that I'll grab onto it here again but from the other direction if I can get this in a way where I can actually hammer on it, it might be a little tricky if that arm <laughs> this bracket sure helped and a vice would be nice but I don't have one have to get creative. All right, taking off the, taking off the, thr the, I would call it a throttle plate, whatever you want to call it, uh, the valve. So I'm going to take this guy off. It'll come off. Hopefully it'll come off. Oh, 
There she goes. Okay, so now this guy just pops off. Work that out. I'd like to make sure I'm aware of the orientation. Fortunately, I have my videographer here. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yes, Jen. Um, but just for note, it's like a little, uh-oh, something's wrong, face. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that goes down, slides in just like that. So the mouth is toward the, the smaller end. The eyes are toward the bigger end. Okay, we got that out. Now the name of the game is um, to try and see. I got a bearing puller. I have limited tools here. And I'm going to try and see if I can rig something up on the end of this shaft and pull this pull this out. It's going to take a decent amount of force to do. Um, it's just a matter of do I have something that can make it happen. So we'll be back. Okay, so update. Uh, yesterday, um, our friend Andy here, whose house we're at, I, we had walked our dog about a week ago and met um, his wonderful neighbor, Derek. I was able to go over there and ask him. He's a kindred spirit. He rides dirt bikes as well. And so I had a hunch he would have something that he might be uh, gracious enough as he was to let, to let us borrow. And he just happened to have a vice that is not bolted down and a torch. So I went and got a new bottle of map gas. I recommend map gas. It's hotter than propane. Propane will work if that's what you got. So now we have a vise to hold this thing still so I can manipulate this lever once we get it hot and try and break it loose. So what I'm going to do now, oh, and we got, I got some PB blaster here. Um, I like it better than WD-40. It works a little better to get in there and penetrate and break things loose. So what I'm going to do now is heat the heck out of it, try and get it to go. Oh, she's hot. She moved or not? Oh, I think she's moving. She's a moving. Yeah, baby. <laughs> what are you talking about? She's moving. Woo! So you're just wiggling it back and forth? Back and forth. Get it unseized. Let the oil seep in there. Oh no. What do you think was happening? I thought the shaft wasn't moving altogether. I get scared. We're still far from where we need to be, but we're closer than we were. Hey, welcome back, YouTubers, RV goers, people with exhaust brake issues. Would you have a look at this? She's moving. So what I did was, um, as you saw a moment ago, I was able to get it to move, but I still had to use the wrench to do it. Once I could use the wrench by hand to do it, the whole time I'm doing this, you want to keep adding lubricant uh, into the pockets where the shaft goes. Once I got it to move some, then I switched by putting this in the vise this arm in the vise and then I was moving the whole body. So I had it upside down like this with this part in the vise. I started working the body, working the body, working the body, and then continuously filling up if you want to get in there, Jen. 
that little galley right there, that little recess. Filling that up, I'll show you, with oil, because what we're wanting to do is, one, we're wanting to get oil to go in through that bushing and lubricate everything, but also we're breaking a bunch of grit and rust and grime free. So what I want to do is, I want it to purge that as much as it can and kind of flush it out the back side as I spin it. And first I did it like, you know, quarter turn, half turn, but then give it its whole range of motion until it spins freely everywhere. So I kept doing this, kept doing this. Switch it up a little bit. Get some more oil in there. Yep. Spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it. Alright, so now flip it over. This is where Jen comes in handy. And so you're gonna hold this arm for me because it's kind of in the way. <laughs> and Down here? I just hold it up. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. There's not as much of a recess on this side, so I like to keep hitting it with oil, try to keep it level, so it's gonna work that oil in there and purge, flush out, flush out the grime. And so I just keep doing this for a while. Keep doing it. <laughs> Until I get it nice and smooth. And I'm very pleased with where we are. It's, uh, I'm pretty confident it worked just fine the way we have it right now, but I'm gonna go the extra mile and keep working it so I won't bore you with that. Um, we'll probably post the video here. We'll see, um, we have some of that proper lubricant, which is pack brake, PAC brake, high temperature synthetic lubricant. If you Google pack brake uh, lubricant, maybe we can put that in the link, I don't know. Um, they'll send you, you order or buy a bottle of this stuff it's going to hold up uh, to the temperatures and it's a regular maintenance thing. So what I'll do is once I'm done flushing, flushing, flushing with this, I'll hit it with a bunch of brake clean, do the same thing, work it with brake clean to try and rinse out all the penetrating oil, as much of the penetrating oil as I can and the grime. And then I'm going to oil it with that oil bottle of that special oil. So nothing new here. If you have an RV uh, or anything that has this, pack brake, air brake on it. Um, if you're going to be shutting it down and not using it for, I mean, the work that I had to do to this, if I was going to, if I didn't know, I, I was going to shut it down for especially the season or maybe a couple months or something. It's, <laughs> you guys saw how much it work it took for me to do this. Like I said, it's a thousand to $1,200 part alone. That's without maintenance. Um, so yeah, when you shut it down, lube it up, lube it up maybe run it, work it, um, and just keep it on your maintenance schedule. Whenever you change your oil, lubricate this thing. And for sure, when you shut it down for the season, season lubricate it. There you go. Hope this helps you. Um, I'm grateful for all the help from Jen, my Andy, our neighbor. Um, yeah, I'm grateful that it worked out. So I really didn't want to buy a new one. All right, guys, first I'm going to put this line back on. <coughs> Excuse me. Put this line on right here because it's going to be a sure, a sure a lot easier to put on before I put the engine brake back on because it's going to be tucked up right under there. We're going to secure this guy. Okay. Got that on. Push this pipe back. I have to get the clamp on the front side. I'm gonna bring it in here. Open this clamp up. Slide it onto the turbocharger. Oh no. <laughs> oh, our other clamp slid down. Get on there, buddy. There it is. So the way I think I'm gonna do this is Go ahead and tighten down this side and I'm open to interpretation, but from my experience, 
this flange doesn't need a gasket, that type of flange, which is nice. So I'm gonna tighten that one down first. So now I get this gasket here, because this side does need a gasket on that flange. Had a hell of a time finding this. Um, what I ended up using was a, a part number for a Cummins DPF, which is a diesel particulate filter, a DPF um, flange gasket. It's, it's, it's a five inch one. So it was actually an extra like quarter inch or so bigger. I trimmed that off because it hung over too much, but it'll work just fine. So we're gonna take that guy. I'm gonna slide that in here. You can see how it contours. And make sure it's in there right. Um, doesn't work out too well for me on this one, but what I used to do a lot was, um, you can do, some people use a little bit of um, like painter's tape, um, the blue tape or what do you call it, masking tape. And just put a little piece to hold it on. Um, I used to use uh, 3M or whatever, like spray adhesive slap it on there and it would help hold the gasket um, in place while you're tightening it and putting it together. Don't really need to on this, at least for my application. It seems pretty, pretty easy for me. It's easy with these kinds of clamps to think that you're, it looks like you're in, in the groove on both sides. I don't know if you can get down there, Jen, and see that. You can see how that saddle is gonna grab the lip on either side. It's really common from my experience for the back side to be off but the front looks like it's on you get it tightened down and then you have a leak okay so I got my nut set on there my gasket's still in there wonderful that's it right there now I'll quickly grab my wrench no. <laughs> <laughs> Side. I'm gonna check on the back side. She's on. She's on. She's on. She's on. Cool. There we go. She's on. So there you go. It's installed. So next stop is we need to dump. Um, so I need to go into town. So we'll get to test it and hope everything goes well. Okay, update. <clears throat> so, uh, as I'm sure you guys already saw, I got this all put back together. Jen and I went for a test drive. We had to dump our tanks. So we used that as an opportunity to test out and see what the fruits of my labor were. Um, so most of it was good. Everything worked, it actuated. Jen has a video she'll probably show that working. So what I did was, what we did was I drove down a road that was not, you know, like a residential, one that wasn't busy with any traffic where it's safer. She came back here, videotaped for me, because when I was running it, with the window open or with it quiet, I could hear like a like a really loud air noise. So one, I wanted to make sure there wasn't a leak because um, between that solenoid uh, mag valve down there that actuates, that allows the air to go up to the cylinder, I want to make sure we didn't have any air leak there. But what it was, if you look right here, and if you watch in the video, the very first time it runs, if you look closely from right here, you'll see a poof, you'll see like a poof. And I don't know if it shows up on the video, but down there you can see that there's black carbon. So when this closes, it's holding a lot of air pressure from here through the turbo and back to the exhaust manifold. And so it was leaking air out here. It did work. It definitely works. Um, no, the effectiveness is going to be 
diminished because it's leaking air or exhaust exhaust so I didn't think I needed it I don't remember running these but I did buy one so I'm gonna put it on I'm gonna put it on and I believe this is where the part number for it right there um, I already told you about the gasket I had to find for there but I did get this guy right here so I got it I'm gonna put it on I'm just gonna take it just like before I'm gonna take this clamp off hopefully it hasn't seated too much I'll just pull this guy back and you can see closer now you see all that carbon right there and that's where it was in the video I could see it coming out and, and you'll hear it really loud so got this gasket right here let's slip that down there and try and get this on without dropping it let's see if we can get it back together there we go verify Once again, I want to make sure on the back side that it's on. Oops. I like to give it a little tappy. Check the torque with my hand, my calibrated hand. Once again, if you're new to this, get a torque wrench save yourself a lot of hassle she's pretty damn tight maybe even tighter than it needs to be <laughs> I think that might just back that up a little bit cool beans um, we're gonna be towing her van uh, Dodge Caravan with a dolly as soon as we acquire one so we'll need all the braking we can get hopefully the dolly we get will have uh, some sort of brakes on it. It might not. Um, regardless, we're going to want all the braking we can get. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Okay, hey, uh, I wanted to mention if you guys have any questions about um, how that works or if you have any different issues on your engine brake system. Um, I didn't mention this before. I am a diesel mechanic. I went to school for it. Uh, I worked as a diesel mechanic for a bunch of years. Um, and other mechanics. So if I don't know it, I won't shoot you wrong. I'll either research it or tell you I don't know. But chances are I'll have a good idea or be able to point you in the right direction. So if you have any questions, I showed you kind of some of the components. We, we mostly focused on the exhaust valve itself, but there's the actuator, um, there's the uh, pneumatic solenoid that s sends the air up to it and the wiring to that. So there are some other things that can malfunction. Uh, we haven't tested the rest of our system, so maybe you'll get another video, hopefully not. But uh, if you have any other questions, you need questions, comments, please let me know. I'll do my best to answer them in a timely manner. I hope that's helpful, and I hope I can help out more in the future. Thank you. I have to say, Dating a diesel mechanic sure does come in handy when you live in an RV.